Lorraine Day was a Golden Age actress who made a name for herself in Hollywood as a rare Mormon actress. She never made a big fuss about her faith, but those who knew her best might have noticed she abstained from many of the vices that plagued her contemporaries. Join Facts First as we explore how Lorraine Day never swore, smoked, or drank alcohol her entire life. Lorraine Day was born October 13, 1920, in Roosevelt, Utah. Like many families in that area, her family practiced the Mormon faith. She was born into a wealthy family and had seven siblings. Her father dealt in grain, while her great-grandfather had been a notable Mormon pioneer. Lorraine's family decided around the time she became a teen to move to California. It was there she became interested in acting. She started performing with the Long Beach Players, a troupe that included future star Robert Mitchum. Years later, the two appeared together on the big screen. She graduated from Polytechnic High School in 1938 in Long Beach. Her work with the Long Beach Players led to her first Hollywood contract. That was with Samuel Goldwyn's studio. For her first role on the big screen, she was cast in the 1937 feature Stella Dallas. Not much came of this initial contract. At the time, producer Samuel Goldwyn determined the actress was lacking in talent. Thankfully, RKO Pictures felt differently. The competing studio picked Lorraine up once she became available and set about casting her alongside notable star George O'Brien in a variety of westerns. As Lorraine was making a name for herself on the big screen, she was also making a name for herself within the entertainment community by starting up an L.A.-centered playhouse specifically designed for Mormon performers. One of the people she came into contact was none other than sci-fi writer Ray Bradbury. Long before becoming famous as a writer, Ray allegedly did some stage prop work for Lorraine's L.A. Playhouse. Lorraine found her early success with MGM. Towards the end of the 30s, Lorraine signed a contract with MGM. The studio went about casting her in the Dr. Kildare series of movies, and her work with the studio brought her more attention than ever. Her first appearance was in 1939's Calling Dr. Kildare. Lou Ayers, of course, played Dr. Kildare. As Lorraine was doing her successful work with MGM, she also continued working with other studios. Some of those included the Alfred Hitchcock movie My Son, My Son. That film was released in 1940, fairly early in Alfred's storied career. In 1941, Lorraine Day was determined via a poll to be the most promising starlet in all of Hollywood. That same year, she was given the chance to appear alongside future president Ronald Reagan. That was in the film The Bad Man, a Western-themed comedy. At the time, Ronald wasn't quite the big Hollywood star he was soon to become. He was only the third male lead in the feature, with the bigger male parts being played by Wallace Beery and Lionel Barrymore. Towards the middle of the 40s, Lorraine decided to exit from her contract with MGM so she could sign on once more with RKO Pictures. The increased stardom that the actress had garnered in the years since leaving her last contract allowed her to negotiate a pretty lucrative one this time around. The contract, which was only set to last for five years, alleged that Lorraine only had to make one picture per year. For each picture, she'd be awarded $100,000. Given that this was the 1940s, this was a lot of money. Lorraine had it made, and she continued her career on top of the world. Other performers she got the chance to grace the screen alongside during her time include John Wayne, Cary Grant, and Lana Turner. Lorraine later made a career change into journalism. In the 1950s, Lorraine Day made a slight career change that allowed her celebrity status to have more longevity than it might have had otherwise. Realizing that her days as a leading lady might be fleeting, she decided instead to become the host of her own television series. The series premiered in 1951. Though it was a success, it couldn't decide on a name. Depending on the moment, the series was either known as Daydreaming with Lorraine or The Lorraine Day Show. The success that Lorraine found with the series led to her getting her own radio show in 1952. Though she found a career for herself as an unlikely journalist, she also continued working as an actress. For the most part, her acting was on stage. 
Some of the notable productions she appeared in later in her career include The Time of the Cuckoo, The Women, and Lost Horizon. She was also married three times over the course of her life, and her second marriage opened up a small career tangent for the actress in the world of 1950s sports. Her first husband was James Ray Hendricks. Though James had once been an entertainer, he was a successful executive working at Santa Monica Airport when he and Lorraine married in 1942. The marriage lasted for several years, during which time they adopted three children. Lorraine filed for divorce from him in 1946, though she was only granted an interlocutory divorce. This means the divorced party has to wait a year before remarrying. She already had a second husband lined up, though, when she filed for a divorce from her first, and she didn't want to wait to see if she was still attracted to her new love interest a year later. She wanted to get married right then and there. And she was so adamant, she went about crafting a scheme that would allow her to bypass the rules. Her scheme saw her travel across the border to Mexico to receive a divorce there. Once that was secured on January 21, 1947, Lorraine tried to marry second husband Leo DeRocher the next day. The attempted wedding happened in Texas, but it was later revealed the marriage wasn't official because the divorce in Mexico didn't count. Lorraine's unlikely career tangent in the world of baseball. All complications aside, Lorraine ended up sticking it out with Leo DeRocher and marrying him at the proper time. This was in February of 1948, a little over a year after her divorce. Leo was a professional baseball manager, and Lorraine became very interested in baseball herself. During the marriage, Leo managed the New York Giants. The marriage inspired Lorraine to write a book called Day with the Giants. And the successful book led to a short TV program of the same name. Fitting right in with Lorraine's later career change into journalism, the show consisted of interviews. Despite her apparent passion for both her second husband and his career choice, the pair got divorced sooner than later. When all was said and done, the marriage only lasted for a little over a decade. Lorraine once again had a replacement spouse ready and waiting. This time it was a TV producer named Michael Grilicus. The third time proved a charm, and she and Michael stayed married from 1961 until his death in 2007. They had two children. Lorraine's propensity for getting divorced and remarried may lead some to falsely assume she was a quote-unquote loose woman, but she was actually a devout Mormon throughout her entire life. Once she became a Hollywood star, her Mormonism wasn't talked about all that much, but it remained a giant influence on her life. She never got interested in typical Hollywood vices like drinking and smoking. She also refused to utter curse words. The actress's faith coincided with her conservative values. Not only did she star alongside Ronald Reagan in a movie, she also went on to support him in his bid to become president. Before that, she was a staunch supporter of Republican figureheads like Dwight D. Eisenhower. How She Spent Her Twilight Years Lorraine moved back to her home state of Utah during her twilight years after the death of her third husband. She died a few months later, though the cause was never disclosed. She was 87 years old. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Lorraine Day was a devout Mormon? Let us know in the comments section below.